Well folks, welcome back to another Yonder Mountain Adventure. Uh, I'm up on a bit of a sneaky one tonight. I've just had a little window of opportunity and I thought I just want to get out into the hills. I've looked at the weather forecast. I've consulted various different weather sites. You know, the Met Office and BBC. I think they're unreliable, so I spoke to the best possible weather source that you can get, uh, me mom. And uh, she's told us it's going to be a clear night tonight, mate, Simon. It's going to be a clear night. <laughs> so I'm in the heart of Northumberland and I'm on a wild camp. I'm going to keep it low level. There's a bit of cloud cover at the minute. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. It's one degree Celsius. It's going to get sub-zero. I think it's going to be minus three tonight. So I've got some lightweight gear. I've got to be winter gear. I'm going to have a nice bit of tea up on the top of the crag here. And uh, hopefully... We're going to get to see some beautiful uh, stars and constellations and try and replicate some of Dangerous Dan's photographs. Uh, I haven't got the uh, the expertise that Dan has, like, but I'm going to give it a go. I haven't got fancy gear, I've just got my mobile phone. So, I'm going to have a little bit of a wander around, stretch this old body of mine, um, and, um, and have a little bit of a recce over on the other side here, over next to Tossin Hill here, but otherwise I'm going to head up a little bit later on up over the crowd, get myself pitched up and uh, we're in for a crack and night. Um, I've just been um, amazing. The people who you speak to when you're out doing this type of stuff, absolutely class. I've just spoke to a bloke, Tom. Nice to meet you, Tom. Uh, absolutely mint talking to you. Really interesting bloke. And uh, he used to do a lot of wild camping and hiking and he's been out the country a while and bits and bobs. Anyway, he's back and uh, he's mad keen. He wants to get into it. So, Tom, good luck to you. I hope you do. If you're watching this, mate, all the best to you. Uh, I, you meet some class people doing this. Anyway, I'm just going to fuel up, we're going to go for a little bit of a walk first and then I'm going to head up that crag, pitch up and we'll make a start on it. Fantastic. Oh. Right guys. It is freezing, absolutely freezing. Um, I've just went for a scope out over the uh, over the back of the hills there. Found a couple of really good camping spots. I've been around this area for 25 years, but uh, I've just found some new spots. Uh, so that'd be nice for a little local one at some point in the near future. Um, we're gonna we're not too far really now before we get up onto the uh, the small climb. I think it's about. 300 meters, something like that. It's a nice gradual climb. And uh, the sun's setting over the back of the hills there and it's casting some beautiful light. Absolutely stunning. And even now, it looks like my mom was right. The clouds are, uh, clouds are nearly gone. So I think we're in for a spectacular, really spectacular night. So I really want to get up onto the top of this hill here and uh, get pitched up and I might just see the dying light from the uh, from the sunset there um, but otherwise get hunkered down, get myself settled down and uh, ah, let's go and enjoy this one these are excellent for pointing at things by the way as well fantastic, let's go This is lovely. Hey, we're making some progress now, guys. Uh, the sun, kind of chasing sunset a little bit, but uh, we'll press on. Not much further to go. Let's go. Oh, yes. This is hot. Hot conditions when you're walking like this over the bracket. Oh, dear me, right guys? Whew. Wow. The colours of the clouds are beautiful. Uh, I've taken a slight deviation. Normally, I would camp up on the top of the hill there. But it is the rockiest place in the world. Um, 
So I've just scooted down about 20 metres and I've found myself a nice splot, uh, splot? <laughs> Fat, flat spot here. So I'm going to pitch up and sure enough, when it gets dark, the stars are going to be amazing from here. This is uh, on the brink of dark sky status. So fingers crossed, this looks fantastic. Right, let's, uh, let's get this pack off and make a start on getting this tent up. Cracking lightweight bit of kit tonight, lads, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The Night Cat two person Lanshan. Fantastic. Right, stop this round, Simon. Let's get this thing on. Oh, fantastic. Just peg that down, just to get the pegs down a little bit more to secure it. I don't think it's due to get really windy. Tell you what, this thing, look at that. Drum tight, that. Absolutely class. And completely waterproof. This is the uh, Nightcat. My God, it's cold. Uh, this is the Nightcat Lanshan 2. Uh, outer and inner. Use this a few times. This is absolute belt. I'll put a link in the description. It's cheap as chips as well. I think it's about 100 quid. Unbelievable. And it's mega light. And it uses the trekking poles as you've seen there. So, you know, you're probably using the trekking poles anyway. Hey, I'll tell you what, what a spot this is, man, isn't it? Instantly feel better about this. Like I said before, normally I'm up there and it's just rocky. Uh, and this, I found this lovely flat spot circled by beautiful heather and sheep shit <laughs> oh man the views are going to be absolutely magnificent clear sky a little bit of a pinkish hue over the horizon looking out of the north sea ho oh, ho fantastic right there guys let's load this up i've got a couple of uh I've got a couple of secret weapons for the freezing cold conditions. I'll show you them a little bit later. Oh, hey, it is bitter. Uh, it's definitely sub-zero. The uh, It's biting me face, I can feel it. What do you think about this, by the way? I couldn't find me flex tail gear. So, I've bought, brought, me camper van lights. I'll put them up in a minute. Ambient lighting. Is it glamping or what? And before I get this all loaded up, do you know what I'm gonna do guys? I couldn't resist man. I couldn't resist. Oh god, this is uh, a little treat from Greg's. Oh yes. Mmm. Fantastic. <laughs> right. Let's go for it. Mm. Wow. It is freezing. <laughs> And I mean physically, uh, the tent's frozen. It's about seven o'clock at night. Uh, it is really cold. This is probably the coldest I've felt in a long time. Uh, my body temperature is fine, but the outdoor conditions are Baltic and the wind's starting to get up a little bit. Um, the more astute amongst you will have noticed me balaclava. <laughs> it's hardly noticeable. I look like a burglar. Anyway, I am uh, I am warm 
inside of here. I've just been outside guys, I'm taking some photographs. Trying to get them as good as Dangerous Dan's of the stars. The night sky is absolutely incredible. Every bit as good as, um, as Glen Etiv, if not clearer, to be honest. It's absolutely unbelievable. So I'm just uh, really just enjoying this, to be honest, out nipping out, enjoying the, uh, the sights and then nipping back in to get warm. Uh, I would estimate it's about minus four, according to the weather forecast. And it's gonna get cooler through the night as well. I mean, we winter gear, of course, 4.5 R rated mat, foil um, mat underneath. And I'm in the Leviathan 900, which is always, that's always warm. So I'm gonna be warm as toast. No problem at all. Lovely this, mind. What an experience. Right guys, I think it's time for a real ale review. What better in freezing conditions than to have an absolutely freezing cold can of, uh, of IPA. This is one of my favorites, this is a brew dog. And this is the Hazy Jane Guava. Absolutely unbelievable. It's also got some sheep shit on it. Never mind. The thicker the meat, the stronger the man. Let's get this opened up. Oh, nice. Let me just get the old cup here. We'll get a port. Oh, that's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to that. Nice and light, uh, the Guava one, nice and light. It's a 5% IPA from Brewdog. Get this tent door out of the, the way. Oh, lovely. Fruity, immediately. Aye, very, very nice. If you've seen the New Year's Eve video with me and Dangerous Dan, a lot of the ales didn't seem to, uh, seem to smell of anything. And I was wondering if it was maybe COVID or something that I had. <laughs> One did smell a little bit like engine oil. <laughs> right, down the hatch. <sighs> That's just about frozen my teeth. That's freezing. That's lovely. Mm. Ay, lovely and fruity. Lovely and fruity, nice and light. Definitely a drinkable one. Quite strong at 5%. Oh, God. Mm. That's got the oomph factor, for sure. Hazy Jane Guava. Absolutely unbelievable. That's one of my favorites, that. Right, guys, what am I gonna give that as a score? One, one last sup, down the hatch. Mm. Ah, that's bloody lovely that like nine out of ten absolutely fantastic <laughs> mm. right guys I'll just show you what I'm having for tea tonight it's a chili con carne with golden vegetable rice I've got some frozen water there. <laughs> There's the star of the show. Hazy Jane Guava. Absolutely unbelievable, that one. Like, really good. I've got some Heather Teas, of course. That goes without saying. I've got some Baby Bells. And just to finish off proceedings, we've got Mr. Kipling's. Now, I can't remember if these were... Um, oh, I don't know. Fancy fondants or... I can't remember what they're called now, actually. Anyway, they're bloody lovely. So that's the uh, that's the plan. And I've even got the uh, the lights inside here, looking pretty sweet. Oh, hi guys. Oh, I've had a bit of an um, <laughs> interesting hour or so. So I am. Um, I'm just making tea in a minute, I'll show you this, you'll laugh at this one. So, um, well I was out before and I came in and I sat down and uh, actually sat on the bottom of the tent and it's ripped the top of the inner away from the outer. <laughs> so the inner is now sagging as you can see 
I've made like a double loop knot either side and I've tried to make it a little bit of makeshift like but it's really changed the uh, structural integrity of the tent and the wind's starting to get up as well. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is I've come to make tea um, and I've got, um, I've got no cutlery whatsoever. And I mean, I have been in this situation before, no spoon, no knife, no fork, no knout. Been in this situation before and I've used tent pegs but I'm needing, or I haven't got any spare tent pegs. So what I'm doing is, I'm kind of using, hang on, I'll show you. The inside, this is the rice packet. I've had to compromise. <laughs> this is innovation, this is engineering, wild camping engineering this. So I've kind of uh, been able to just do the do the tea like that, and I'm just kind of eating it um, the best I can really like. Which is basically, this is the, uh, this is the, this is the gist of it. This is this is not uh, glamorous at all. Mm. However, it's minus four, and I'm still getting a hot meal, uh, which is really um, you know the important thing. I'm not cold, like oh, that's lovely, that like cheap cheap meal, cheap meal. So the moral of the story: come double prepared. Unbelievable. Don't get it wrong. It's not uh, it's not hindering from the fantastic night like. Look at that man. Oh. It's gotta make mend and make do. Or whatever the phrase is. Um oh, anyway, this is nice. And it's hot. Right guys, I'm gonna um I'm going to tinker around with this a little bit more, see if I can get it a little bit stronger than it is now. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the hay. It's about quarter ten now. And it's really cold outside. Like, it's dropped. Dropped again. So I'm going to say goodnight and God bless, guys. Hopefully I'll see you in the morning, if, uh, if this tent stays up. <laughs> Fantastic. Mmm. Well, as I mentioned before, um, I sat on the inner <laughs> and collapsed the tent. Uh, the situation's just taking a little bit of a nosedive. I'm having to hold the roof up here. Um, basically, I've had to um, use a couple of like slippy knots and just try and like engineer a way to get this up. But uh, one of the, the left-hand pole here is slipping constantly and collapsing in on it. So I've just put a bit of a guy line out to try and hold that up. Um, but if it's going to be any wind, this thing's going to collapse on us. So, it's going to be an interesting night. <laughs> oh, and also, I forgot a pillar. I'm currently uh, using my uh, fold-up seat. <laughs> uh, uh, but I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down jacket off and I'll, uh, and I'll stuff it into my tent bag, seal it up, and that can be my pillar for the night. Whoa, hey, the beauties of wild camping. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to get some shut eye. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. God bless. Oh, hey.
Oh, hey, what a night. You know, you, you go wild camping for uh, for peace and, tranqu- and tranquility. <laughs> Prescription nature. <laughs> uh, the tent was... Um, it must have collapsed about ten times. I couldn't keep it up. I was trying to guy it out. The wind was blowing it down. Um, the tent, it was because of the ice. There was ice on the inside and the poles were just constantly falling over. I couldn't do anything with it. Uh, so anyway, I bailed. Uh, luckily, before the rain started, um, I talk about a sequence of disaster. So there was that. And obviously, you know, the other things that went on, forgot me pillar, didn't have knives and forks, all that type of thing. And as I was coming down off the hill, my head torch ran out of battery, even though I charged it in preparation. So that ran out of battery, so I had to get down back down to the car with my phone light, which was interesting. Luckily, I know the area, so uh, so that was all right. That actually turned out all right. Got into the car. I'm I'm on my way home now. I've travelled about about five mile. Hit a pothole, and I've burst my front passenger side tyre. <laughs> oh, so it's uh, it's it's like four a.m. or something like that. Uh, and uh, Dangerous Dan is on his way uh, for roadside rescue. <laughs> so what a night, absolutely unbelievable, just goes to show, you know, um, anything can happen, and even sometimes the best preparation in the world doesn't make any difference. So I'm safe here where I am, and I'm warm and I'm, I'm away from the elements, it's absolutely boracic outside. Um... So I'm just going to wait on Dangerous Dan, and that's it. I'm going to call it a night. <laughs> I'm going to sign off here, folks. Um, aye, what a night, what a night. I hope you've enjoyed the video anyway. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the importance of not getting too caught up with the TV <laughs> and the news and the radio and, the, uh, and Facebook and all the doom and gloom. Get out into some wonderful places <laughs> and enjoy some wild camping and some prescription nature. And hopefully your tent stays up. And hopefully if it doesn't stay up, you get back to your car all right. And if you get back to your car all right, hopefully you don't have a tyre blowout. Anyway, folks, I'm safe and sound. I'm heading home fairly shortly with Dangerous Dan and I'll catch you on the next Yonder Mountain Adventure. Bye for now. Whoa, fantastic. <laughs>